Well, good morning, St. Phillips. It is Wednesday. It's a gorgeous day outside. Uh, the humidity is broken. So it's a beautiful day. Be outside today. It'll help with your outlook on your whole day, particularly after last night's bloodbath. It was, I, I couldn't get through it. I couldn't sit there. Uh, if you did, God bless you. Um, because of that, uh, I'm going to do the psalm today. I think we need a psalm uh, to get us lifted up after last night. Just a couple of quick things that I want to lift up, though. Um, you will have noticed out, uh, we sent resent an email this morning out of the church office about um, the upcoming uh, All Saints Sunday Remembrance. We will be doing that remembrance as we do every year of our Alpha and Omega Saints, those who have been born and those who have passed away in the last year. Um, if you would like your loved one remembered, check that email out. If you um, have trouble with your email or you didn't see it, contact the church office, talk to Lisa. She can guide you through it or get your information or whatever. The second thing is just a reminder that if you are interested in grabbing one of the devotional books for the next two months or the next quarter, whatever it's covering, um, be sure to stop by here at the church. There's a basket sitting outside the front door. You don't even need to wear a mask. If you're out and about and you're driving by and you need one of the uh, devotional books, uh, particularly right now during this COVID time where we're uh, separated, just a little extra prayer, a little extra boost to get you through the day, stop by. They're sitting out there between 8 and 3 every day, um, except on rainy days. We bring them in for that. Uh, but you can just drive by. Don't even have to let us know that you're coming. Drive by, come on up, grab it, um, and uh, and enjoy. Um, if it's uh, after hours or rainy days, uh, let us know that you're coming and we can have it ready for you. So as I said, um, after last night, uh, which was awful to watch on TV, um, I, I needed something that was a little bit more uplifting, and I found it in the psalm that we read uh, last Sunday. Um, it's Psalm 25, verses 1 to 9, and I thought this was a lot better than anything we heard last night. So here we go. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember my sins, the sins of my youth, or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. I was um, trying to look for a good way to, to frame everything. And I was um, reading through um, some sermon prep materials that I had been uh, reading this weekend. And I think what, um, what Dr. Paul Meyer uh, said about this uh, is better than anything uh, that I could have come up with. So rather than claiming his work as my own, I thought I would let his work um, and his reflections on the scripture stand for themselves. So here we go. It never ceases to amaze me how a person's capacity to review the contours of their life decisions can adjust how they perceive the past, understand the present, or discern how to make good decisions in the future. In this psalm, Psalm 25, the writer engages in a poetic reverie punctuated by reflections on the nature of God and the recognition of human nature. It's a prayer that starts with trusting God and an abiding hope in the capacity of God to impact someone's life for the better. And it ends with the affirmation of God's essence as being good and upright. Threaded between the beginning and the end is a dance of human living in the presence of God. Good decisions are mixed with bad. Trust lines and marks from a lack of trust flow back and forth across the text like a drawing. It is sometimes difficult to see which line leads to which conclusion. 
How does a decision shape a future line that could either be in accordance with the will of God or counter to it? Yet, collectively, they form the image of what has been or what is present. I love that. I wanted to read that again. How does a decision that you should make right now or have made in the past, how does a decision shape a future line that could either be in accordance with God's will or counter to it? Yet, collectively, they form the image of what has been or what is present. The psalmist's prayer entreats God to be a teacher, a guide, an instructor, who can provide insight about what makes a life worth living. The prayer massages an enduring emotional legacy of guilt and shame for past misdeeds with words of comfort and hope. What the exact nature of the guilt or shame is left undefined and perhaps aids in what you and I hear so that we can empathize with the writer. They fill in the story with their own story so that the psalmist's prayer can become their own. The psalmist's poem also sounds like that of one pleading to find a way out of a dire predicament or from what may be occluding their vision of what makes for a good life. What the psalmist was facing isn't clear, but the emotional experience seems familiar. Those who have experience with the consequences of bad decisions know how they can impact the mind and the emotional outlook on everything around them. Those who have looked at the possibilities and the implications of difficult times and decisions of their lives know from life experience that bad things can happen if a decision is made incorrectly. And bad things sometimes just happen. For example, those who have the experience of driving a car know that accidents happen. In my experience, they happen when you least expect them. For example, while driving our car on a tree-lined country road, a deer sprinted directly across our path. My wife and I discovered quickly that our gentle Mother's Day ride had developed into something quite different than we had expected. The same could be said for the deer. Sometimes layers of instruction and miles of experience cannot avoid a collision. Yes, bad things can happen. But the poem, but the writer's poetry swirls like words of a dust devil, picking up themes and ideas from one place only to have them land in another. The desires of the student to learn are commingled with God as teacher who can provide that which is desired and will bring about fullness of life. The impact of a teacher on one's life cannot be overstated. People often state that the most influential persons in their life stories are a parent, a sibling, or a teacher. The writer suggests an awareness of the impact that good teaching can have on one's life. The psalmist is entreating God to be their teacher so that their life journey might be worth living. Perhaps, it is the fa- perhaps at its foundation, the psalm writer is wrestling with a question of formation. What is it that leads to a life worth living? What are the things that would impede a life worth living? How can one be guided toward that which is worthy and away from that which would be less than helpful for living? Here, the writer's answer seems to be one that sloshes back and forth between that which denudes life and that which helps a life to flourish. On one side, there is treachery without cause sin and rebelliousness rebelliousness toward the ways of God, and on the other, there is a cognizance of what God has already provided to the people of God. I thought that was a wonderful summary, and if you struggled with any of the language that he used, I would encourage you to kind of pause here, rewind, and listen to it again Uh, Sometimes when we listen to something a couple of times, it took me a couple of times to read this to really have those things jump out. Um, This struggling that the psalmist has with the idea of a good life. And and he seems to be, as um, Dr. Meyer talks about, um, it, it seems to be this sloshing back and forth between things that have happened in the past, things that are happening now, bad things that have happened, 
good things that have happened, but kind of through it all is laced this kind of understanding that God has been active and present through it. Even in the bad things that happen, which are clearly not God's will, are not out of God's ability to affect some kind of change. And I have to tell you, that word was really important for me coming out of watching the debates last night, which was uh, somebody called them a dumpster fire inside a train wreck, you know, inside something else. It was something along those lines. And I just was um, feeling so down after watching that. Um, this concept that the world sloshes back and forth, almost like a tank full of water, right? Between things that are bad, things that are good, things that bring us down, things that build us up. Somehow, even when we're over on that side of the tank, like last night, where we're sloshing through everything that's bad, we remember that God's even present in that, ready to draw us forward. And I think the challenge is, the challenge in all of this is to listen and watch for God. That God can be a teacher for us, even in those unpleasant times, even in those things we don't see coming. That God can be a teacher for us um, God can be a hope sustainer in those times. God can be a life restorer in those times. And, and I think what was powerful were the words in that, um, in that psalm, which are not the exact English translation. Show me, teach me, and guide me. That in all these things, good and bad, the back and forth of life, the past, the present, the future... God is trying to show us, is trying to teach us, and trying to guide us. What life-giving thing is God trying to teach us, show us, and guide us today? Through what's happening in your life, through what's happening around us? What is God trying to show us, teach us, and guide us? Let us pray. Lord, in the midst of so much in the year 2020, show us some hope. Show us where we're going. Teach us, Lord, how to be patient in this time. How to continue to love and not to despair. How not to give up and adopt negative attitudes and, um, and anger and hatred and division because those are the natural things of discord of chaos and Lord guide us guide us into a new way of living a new life without COVID a new existence without division and anger and hatred And Lord, a new life where you are Lord of all, a Lord of mercy, love, and justice. Restore all in need, Lord. And keep us in your good grace this day and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.